Hi everyone, this is Holly over at Hot Humble Pie. Welcome to my channel if you're new, and a big hello to my subscribers. I love you guys, all of you. Today's video is taking part in the Using Trash to Create Treasure Challenge hosted by the lovely Casey over at Coffee with My Sunshine and her co-host this month and equally lovely Jessica from Measure and Mix. If you haven't checked out their channels already, please do. The links are below in my description box as well as the link to the playlist where you'll find a list of amazing creators that are also participating in this challenge. And as always, I hope you enjoy my video. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you hit that button. DIY number one. You're going to need a sharp utility knife to cut some aluminum cans. Cut the top off first, then down the side, and then the bottom. Keep the bottom and cut it like I'm showing you here. You will need six cans all together for this craft. Go ahead and make yourself some templates for petals. You'll need three one large, medium, and small. And then you're gonna cut out three cardboard circles. I do recommend you wear gloves for this craft as well. <laughs> I didn't at first, but I gave in. I didn't cut myself, but it just felt like I might. So I took precaution and I suggest you guys do too. So you're going to glue petals then in between each one of those spaces like I'm showing you here on the video. You'll start with your six big petals at the bottom and then you'll do six more petals in between the gaps and then you'll do the small petals the same way in between each of the creases of the medium petals. I hope you're staying with me here. Go ahead and glue the middle down. Now I used hot glue but I did end up tearing the middle off and adding E6000 and hot glue just to make it really really durable. I think you guys should too because there is some pressure with the curling it's like it wants to pop back up so you do need some stronger adhesive i painted one green pink and purple i actually like the way the purple one came out it's kind of streaky like a glaze but i didn't worry about any imperfections you guys don't worry about it because these are going to be galvanized and you won't notice any of that by the time we galvanize it so i'm going ahead here and i'm adding some dimension with purple just adding different colors like you would see in nature where the flowers have shadows and darker and lighter colors And that's what we have when we're all done. And then you take yellow and you're gonna sponge it on on purpose so that it's textured and it looks all marshmallowy and squishy like a real flower would. You know, you don't want it to be flat, you want it to have texture. And I'm using burnt umber there just to add some more shadow and dimension so it looks like a real center, well hopefully kind of like a real center of a flower. And here I'm using pewter gray. Now this is a nice trick I love. When I want to do any kind of mini galvanizing, I love using blush brushes. This blush brush was only a dollar at the 99 cent only store and I think it does great little mini galvanizing dots. So you guys might want to try that out. And here's one of those cup noodles or lunch, whatever, those unhealthy things <laughs> that are full of sodium. And I thought they would make great plant pots. So I cut them in half and I paint them with one coat of black paint to make sure all the words are covered. And I give it two coats dry brushing of white paint because I was gonna do just one coat, but then I looked at it, it's still a little darker than I wanted. I wanted these to be a bit brighter. And so I go ahead and give it a second coat of white paint. And here's something I made on my computer with labels and a farmhouse font. It, it is going to be now on an image online. It's a website that hosts images. So the link is below my description box. You guys can now download this and do the exact same thing if you want. You can adjust the size to whatever size you want. But I take burnt umber there and I stain it. And here's some poster board I'm gonna cut out for the back of these flowers, you know, the picture. I forget what that's called. Somebody in the comments tell me what that's called. Whatever you mat this on for the picture. But I'm using burnt umber here to edge the flowers and make them look old and rustic and, you know, aged. Because these are going to be galvanized summer flowers, but they're still in the farmhouse theme. And here I am dry brushing the foam board. And I'm moving so quick and my brush is so dry that the board never really gets wet from the paint and that way I don't have to deal with any curling because I don't want to have to paint the back of the board this time but there's actually about five to six layers of paint on there you just have to make sure each time you do it it's very very dry and here I am measuring and scoring it with a pencil so that I get those nice lines going down and after all that painting my flower pots white 
I end up having to make them brown. I kind of stain them a little bit because my original plan was to have a dark brown background, but I switched it to the white background. And here's three skewers and I just painted a nice natural dark like stem green that you would find on the flowers during summer. But you can paint it any green that you want. And I'm using an egg carton here to cut the bottom of the egg cups off of because these flowers need to be elevated. I realize if I push them down, it's going to flatten out all of those curls in the petals and then I get flat flowers. I just dry brush this frame that I was going to throw away with a bit of territorial beige from Apple Barrel Paint and I darken the leaves that I steal from those Valentine Day hearts. Those aren't really my style anymore so I wasn't going to use those either and I take some black paint and age the plant pots a little bit. I'm going to glue the egg cups on the top of the skewer stems and these will help hold my flowers up. It works really well too you guys. The petals keep their curls and the 3D effect is really pretty. You don't need to use foam board either to mat it on. It's just, I don't know if you noticed, my cat chewed the left side of that foam board, so I was going to throw it away or use it just for filler. But you can use, obviously, anything that's firm. And I'm just aging around the labels here because I love farmhouse. I love the rustic look, and I love aging pretty much almost everything. So I'm just mod podging everything on and sealing everything up and doing the finishing touches. I'm going to apply two thin strips of hot glue to attach the flower pots to the bottom of the base. And I'm doing the same thing with the leaves. I'm sure you can see what I'm doing, but just in case. That's my last little set of leaves right there. I decide to use some scrap burlap and cut it in strips and then just push it down where the dirt would be and that turns out to be super cute. And I aged this little butterfly with burnt umber. He's just this random butterfly I was going to throw away because it was on like a Michael thing that I didn't like from Michaels. And here it is, you guys, a final craft. And I love this. I mean, I really love this. I don't think the camera does it justice. They remind me of that craft that you would find in a corner boutique store in a resort area that sells one-of-a-kind art pieces. It's like that when you walk in and you it's just stunning. They are so pretty. They sparkle. I highly recommend you guys try this craft. DIY number two. You're going to need an egg carton and you were going to need a paper towel roll but just ignore that. I'm going to try and make a succulent. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I actually went to price those because I needed some extra ones for staging for these videos and they are so expensive. I think three were like $18 if you want them in the size that I'm going to make right now and I realized when I looked at this egg carton that it had this thick really good you know look to it that would be a great imitation for those big thick leaves that the succulents have because you can't get that with a toilet roll you certainly can't get it with coffee filters it's a very unique look with the leaves so at least some of the leaves on the, I mean succulents come in different looks and shapes and sizes some of them are so thick you guys I think you probably have to use the bead recipe that I make beads with you could probably try doing that but for this type of succulent these leaves turn out to be absolutely perfect so I go ahead and I cut them out and then I use this color and if you watch my previous video for the look for less I talk about a color that's like root beer it's kind of like a purpley root beer color but I knew it would be perfect on this green to imitate that reddish color that the, the succulent has on the edge of its leaves and then here is that brush again that's full of Mod Podge it dried I could never get it out but I love this brush for this technique because if you put white paint on and then try to get the white paint off it's super stiff and when you rub really hard it leaves like this cloudy thing behind I don't know if you can see that because real succulents have like that cloud 
white like I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about like that cloudy look over them they're not bright green and if you do get too much paint on this if you try this craft don't panic you can see me just using my fingers to rub it in and rub it off and it does the same cloudy look and it comes out perfect I mean this is a great technique And this jar is a minced garlic jar, you guys. <laughs> oh, it's hard to get the smell out, I admit. But here's the trick. I ended up spraying bleach in it and leaving it out in the sun, and that did the trick. It just smelled like glass after that. So it, I just thought it was such a cute shape for a little mini plant pot. I've been saving that jar for a while. And here I am using the bottom of the egg cup again. I'm going to call it an egg cup because I don't know what it's called. But... There's the formation that you're going to need to have at the end. So if you need to pause the video so you can kind of check that out, it'll show you how many you need, approximately the sizes, you know, the cascading sizes. And you're going to start by gluing your first set of leaves on the inside of the cup. You can see what I'm doing there. You're going to use six of them and you're going to start on the inside. Now you will end up doing the outside at the very end, but to begin with, you do the inside. And these leaves also curl really easy. The only thing you have to be careful of when you curl them, curl them around your big finger, like not anything thin like a pencil because you'll crack the paint. You know, in some places then was the paint cracked and I just flipped it over and used the other side and then repainted it. But they do curl and then they hold their shape, which was really surprising too. So I was really pleased with them actually. These, I never thought of egg cartons, but they make really excellent little petals and they look because they're kind of thick and juicy looking they make it look alive and just it, it was anyway you'll see and just like with the aluminum can petals that we made you want to glue those petals in between the other petals each time So now you'll see that I start putting the ones on the outside edge, the very bottom where I talked about, you know, in the beginning, I was going to save that till the end. Maybe you guys can do it differently, but for me, I just found that I was able to get a better feel for where they're supposed to be so that it looks like an identical imitation if I saved this step to last. And I'm just taking some jute twine here from Walmart and wrapping this up to cover it. You know, I don't want people to know it's a jar. That's a nice top for it. And I like this. It's a little thicker. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is a great deal. You get like 100 feet for a little over $4 from Walmart. And I like the thin jute twine at the Dollar Tree too. But this is good for different reasons. And then I use a flame to get rid of the strings. And there he is. And oh my gosh, you guys, I have a high definition camera. So if I was to film your face, you'd be able to count every single one of your pores. But you cannot see any of the egg carton texture. These leaves look juicy and thick and real. You can make these in every single different color. Those purples and all the beautiful. You'd save a fortune. I absolutely love this craft. DIY number three. So you're going to need this shape container and I'm showing you what needs to go because it looks fake. Now I didn't realize when you cut off that, I guess it's a lip that folds over the top, it's connected to all these multiple little pieces of plastic to make it firm and it's a nightmare. I managed to get it all off but it's just too flimsy and it looks terrible. So I go online to find evidence that metal real planters, you know, do have the edges. And I'm so happy I find some that look very similar so we can go ahead and do this craft. So this is the second try and I go around the edge carefully. The lines have to be perfectly straight. This is sped up, but take your time you guys because if you have crooked lines, that's a dead giveaway that it's fake. So you want things to look nice and expensive. The lines have to be perfectly straight so you have to have a sharp knife. But I remove it so no one knows it was ever there. Now here, I'm using Krylon in Lumum. I love that spray paint. And I just give 
these guys one coat of paint they cover really easy but see those little webs that's what I was trying to cut off before I'm showing you now what I have to contend with because we have to get rid of that so I pull out my spackling these things have to be covered because you know they give it away that this is you know trash or not real or not metal you know that you just have to make it go away and I still have that thing in the front that kind of goes up at an angle which I will cover because I don't really like that either and I did a light sand but it was more just to remove loose loose pieces you don't really need to sand it so that wasn't necessary and I use three colors there I'm using the, the iridescent silver pewter gray and black all in apple barrel paint and I'm just taking an old paintbrush now I use old gooked up paint brushes for galvanizing I prefer this because the bristles are kind of spread out and chunky they actually leave like nice little chunky like dots and amoeba shapes that are miniature speaking of amoeba shapes <laughs> I take my sponge and I'm doing the actual amoeba shapes because real galvanized steel in fact I think you can't you can't galvanize metals unless they have iron in them so like the stuff we buy in the craft stores I think it's aluminum so that's actually faux galvanizing that's not even real Real galvanizing does have the dark spots on them, which used to be considered, you know, cosmetically unattractive. And now, of course, we're all trying to get that look. And I end up having to do three coats of the iridescent silver over that to tone those down because I don't want them super, super dark. I want them to be, you know, when you galvanize still the level of darkness with those changes. It's never white, but it does go from like being super dark gray to being like a medium dark gray. And here's a Dollar Tree checker from the checker set. This is my solution, you guys, to covering up the center. And I'm using carbon paper, my favorite method. And I love carbon paper so much, you guys. This time, I'm actually going to color in the numbers. I'm not even going to bother with paint or a marker. I want it to look old school and have like, you know, when you color in the carbon paper, you get these lines already and streaks going through that makes it look like you dry brushed it. So it already looks distressed. See right there. And so it already looks antiqued and it's perfect. And I just glue those down into the checkers. I take a black Sharpie. I try to go around the edge that way and I realize it's not going to quite work. I have to use a paintbrush to really get into the creases, you know, and give it a nice border. And here I'm just taking a mix of burnt umber and black paint and gently patting it around the edges to age it a bit. I'm going to seal that in with some Mod Podge and glue it on the front of my butter container to cover that arch and it works beautifully to conceal that. And then I'm going to go ahead and hot glue just some twine on the back of that faux wood plank. And because these are so light, I only need hot glue to glue them down on top of the wood plank as well I mean they're on there stuck on there for dear life and I just have all my different spring flowers from Walmart they're so beautiful and here's the final reveal you guys and it's absolutely stunning in person everything looks real the metal containers the wood now I'm sorry I didn't include the tutorial on the wood plank but that is actually made out of an Amazon box that I was going to recycle so it qualifies for this challenge it's just if I had added the full tutorial to this video it would have made this video too long I'm trying to get my videos a little bit shorter here but look at it it's absolutely stunning and I will leave that video link at the end of this video for you to click on as well as down in my description box so make sure you go check it out because it's a great craft you can write words on it you can hang whatever you want on it really helpful and if you like what you saw give me a big thumbs up and until the next video breathe deep fret not and do things that make you happy